is... Wow! What a week. What a week. Politrix. Politrix. Straight into Politrix with analyst, commentator, and author Botsang Muilo. Botsang is back in the building. Didi Mabuza resigned as deputy president. Uh, Botsang. Um, obviously uh, paving the way for deputy, uh, soon-to-be deputy president Paul Mashatile, we assume. Well, it, that's our assumption and expectation. Yes. But the big story this week, we've been anticipating a cabinet reshuffle. It has not quite happened at the pace many had hoped anticipated. And surely after his latest mandate at Nazarek, President Ramaphosa should be very emboldened right now in saying, uh, I want you, I don't want you, I want you, I don't want you? Or is it still negotiations? Is it still consulting? Well, with the challenges faced by uh, 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 the government and the country, uh, 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 Mr. S, I, I think the reshuffle of the government is long overdue, even yeah. before NASDAQ. Sure. We would recall that there's been two, about two or three vacancies mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. in, 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 in the cabinet, and I don't know how did the president survive for so many months with those vacancies. May, about, maybe they're not needed after all. Or, 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 most probably, if we survived almost a year uh, in one of the ministries. Now, the third one was created by uh, the election in December sure. of the uh, Minister of Transport, uh, Mr. Fikile Mbalula, to be the Secretary General of the ANC. So it's automatically, because that's a full-time post at Lutuli House, it creates another you know, a vacancy. Then the resignation of uh, uh, Deputy President Mabuza as mm. well, would recall that the resignation actually, or the request to depart office of the deputy presidency happened some so over about a month ago yes, sir. but now finally has resigned as a member of parliament and i think it has put there's no more time for negotiations you know mm -hmm. um, president ramaphosa is literally left with 12 months in the position by february 2024 it will be exactly five years that he has occupied mm -hmm. that position and and i think it's eminent he created another fifth vacancy by creating the minister of electricity that will be sitting in the president so we are sitting literally with five vacant ministerial positions so that, why are they taking so that, long to be filled well uh, as you assumed probably consultations but i think knowing how the anc operates consultation should have happened before they've got a mm. deployment mm. committee he must be knowing whom he wants where but there's another technicality that happened this week yes. the week we are focusing on out of the blue the current Minister of Finance in the Treasury, mm. Mr. Enoch Kodongwan, our sure. son as a member of parliament, would recall that he was a minister as one of those uh, ministers' positions, about four of them, if I'm mm. not wrong, mm. that the president may fill the, the incumbent with a person who's not an MP. Yes. So the move to move Enoch Kodongwan to become a member of parliament has raised eyebrows as well. Uh, uh, does it say he's moving away from Treasury, which I assume that's what's going to happen, mm. and mm. it's an assumption, is he going Going to be our next minister of electricity. What happens to the ANC resolution that says uh, SOEs must the SOE uh, department or mm. ministry mm. must be dissolved? Sure, uh, it's not me. It's the ANC resolution from Nasrek. Mm. Mm. It must be dissolved, and 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 those departments must go, or those SOEs must go to the mother departments, the relevant departments. For example, anything that has to do with transport must move to transport. Sure, sure. Anything that has to do with energy, like electricity, must move to energy. But now we have a Minister of Electricity. Another question becomes, is ESCOM going to remain in the Ministry of Energy or the Department of Energy, or is it going to the, logically, to the Minister of Energy? So it is not only filling up those cabinet posts. It mm, also has mm. to do with the reconfiguration of the responsibilities of government departments. So uh, I don't think the president has more than the next two, three days to announce cabinet, mm, but mm. we have known for over the years that uh, President Ramaphosa's cabinet keeps things very close and secretly guarded sure. until the last minute. Uh, I expect this to happen not later than Sunday. Should it go beyond Sunday, I think will be in problem. Again, the ANC Secretary General just a week ago, announced mm. that President Ramaphosa will announce cabinet on the 28th or before the 28th of February. We are already on the 3rd of March, and that hasn't happened. Jeez. Having said that, so you are Botsang, a political extraordinaire. Uh, you've got your finger on the pulse. If President Ramaphosa said, listen, um, I'm taking in my confidence, come advise me, who needs to stay? Well, I wish I could get that opportunity. Yes, uh, uh, touch wood. Who needs to uh, stay, uh, whether in the cabinet or within his circle? 
when look uh, uh, political office bearers the president they surround themselves with people they trust yes it's common cause they surround themselves with people not only that they believe they delivered but also who have constituency who have following and mm. who can influence people on the ground yes what, one of those examples i can i can say is that you look at the minister of police i i, I have respect for mr becky mm. but i don't think he's a political office bearer for me he was better off as a police commissioner a person in operations mm. i wouldn't keep him in that post as a minister you can even see now the way he's operating he's on the ground he does news reading he does, he, uh, does advertisements he's everywhere operational he's not at political level mm. so mm. keeping such a person in that position i don't think it will help politically to can make policies while he's an operational them he did better when he was a, he was an MEC than a, a, a politician a political office bearer at cabinet level national sure. but there's quite a number of ministers that I think they've done well I, I I don't have any doubt that despite the ANC internal battles and differences the Minister of Tourism you know Lindy Wesisul has done well in the tourism sector mm. we know we had the challenge of uh, COVID. Uh, COVID and sponsoring now recently yes, the yes, news yes. Uh, sponsoring of a soccer team but i think generally she has done well i have absolutely no doubt that the human settlement has done very well for those who have been following the news there's developments of government employee housing scheme for people who couldn't afford before in in, in fact there's a story i read about a housing scheme targeting mainly single mothers to give them access to housing and finance uh, why is that not making headlines well i i do not know but i've learned myself somewhere that that uh, ministry mm. is going to go into road shows you know provincial road shows okay. to, but but housing if, is if you a need challenge. a dj i'm available for your road shows uh, 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 you know housing has been a challenge a very serious challenge in yeah. the republic of south africa and and wh when i listened one of the first houses that was given out last week mm. it was to a single woman who's mm. a mother sure she's a singer's mother and obviously due to the income disparities mm. and the brackets she couldn't qualify before this scheme that is being launched she couldn't qualify to can buy a house you know and finance for example she was above the three thousand five hundred. that is a minimum for for for, 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 RDP. for so called rdp but houses. doesn't earn enough for a bank to say but doesn't money. earn enough for commercial banks to can finance him and 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 this scheme by the department of human settlement in cooperation mm. with the department of public service administration they come with a bracket to say let us focus and come mm. with a project plan of people aiming less than ten thousand and and uh, or between three thousand five Five hundred and twenty-two thousand, mm. particularly around the middle part, which is about fifteen thousand, and and then let's finance them. So that kind of scheme needs to exposure, and we should. You know, uh, 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 fresh. We should not look at only when we criticize the government and the looting and corruption, but it must be hailed as a step in the right direction. Because there's been a lament for a number of years mm. that people who are in the middle income scheme yes. uh, uh, are being left out uh, of this process of housing. And I mean, housing has become a very important. Actually, according to the constitution of the country, mm. housing is a human right. You know, uh, people must have housing. And and I think if that department does very well and spread the weight mm. of what is available people should know about it the processes of what needs to be done and in simple language don't pe people to go to the website when there's no electricity when there's no data sure, sure. when people don't have access to go to mm. website mm. go to community radios you know spread the weight go to community stations the train stations the mm. bus stations share pamphlets it's very easy to can reach those kind of people so in other words you're saying a minister kubai can stay well I, I would for well this is one of the highlights of the project mm. we know a uh, uh, since took over actually housing if you look at it historically mm. and, and 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 gentlemen watching this show should not think i have anything against men but the last three ministers of human settlements were women mm. uh, it was at some stage lindy way as uh, zulu then it was lindy way as uh, zulu, zulu then is mamulu kukubai and mm. we can see the progress and the performance of these ladies in those portfolios mm. maybe we should go back to what joanna matrini said in the past the women could rule the world and they will do a better thing it, it, it's it's coming clearer and clearer that where women have their hands on, not yes. taking anything away from men, they are performing, especially on social issues. Mm, I think mm. they are doing much better there. Minister Motswaledi has been in the news a lot lately, also in the courts, but he's also been very bold in this is where we stand as a department. What, what, what are your thoughts on uh, Minister Motswaledi? You know, before we can even go to what was happening with courts and, yes. and the Afghanis, if there was one minister, mm. I would keep and mm. recommend to President Ramaphosa to keep. Yes. 
particularly not only in that cabinet, but in that position, mm. to finish what he has started. It's, it's Dr. Aaron Motswale. I agree 100%. One, one is because he has taken a principled position mm. to say, you can hate me, you may not like me, but for the interest of South Africa, this is what I will do, and it mm. has nothing to do with xenophobia or discriminating. Mm. So, so he's a very principled person, and I will keep him. The second part is I hope and pray that he's got enough support of his fellow cabinet ministers like Justice mm. and, 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 and the police and social development to can deal with these issues of immigration. Sure. But also, you know, we should look at the South African immigration laws. They need to be revisited because I think they've got gray areas or they are being abused and exploited. But I think he happens to be one of the ministers that I'm very impressed in, in, in his performance at Home Affairs, especially in the last few years. Were you not in a portfolio committee that dealt with border issues and legislation? Well, that's, 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 and, and I must put a disclaimer to yes. this, to say whatever I'll say on the platform, it has nothing to do with my, yes. my work and it's my personal view and opinion. Uh, I, 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 my career background stems from border management issues and, and development of the Border Management Authority Bill, mm -hmm. which became an act and established the Border Management Agency sure. or authority that falls under Minister Motuali, the coincidental. Mm -hmm. and, and when I sit back now, you know, being out of the system and looking at what is happening, particularly with illegal immigrants mm. operations at uh, you know borders and what minister Motswaledi and the team and other people like the police are trying to do i actually feel very sad uh, uh, that despite the rules and regulations that we have put into place mm. as public servants uh, to can address these issues he is still struggling courts are being used to can fight mm. our own mm. you know mm. legislation and again you you sit and ask yourself a lot of south africans were asking you know, on social media a number of people People who know my background wrote to me and say, but Butang, how is it possible that a court can rule against a minister against the rules of the country? And I said, but it is possible because our constitution has been talking about the independency of the judiciary. Yes. Now, now again, somebody, a normal person, a layman on the street may say, if, if it's independent, why is court making rules and regulations that are against, mm, or decisions mm, that mm. are against the rules and regulations of the country? It's absurd. It is actually very dangerous, and it's a sign that the, the judiciary, the, uh, the arm wing of the judiciary of the mm. state, it is not talking the same language as the legislative wing of the government. In, in, in fact, I was going to say, though, but are the courts wrong for saying you can't refuse these Afghanis a transit visa? Because surely give them a transit visa, let them come in, and only then you can reject if you're going to reject on whatever merits. Look, I, I come from a consular background. You know, mm. I've got over 10 years experience in consular background. Sure. When I read the word transit, already I knew there was something wrong mm. with that uh, application, number one. Number two, with the court decision. Mm. And I'm not basing it on judicial ideas. I'm basing it on the way transit visa. Mm. A transit visa, it stems from the way transit. You are not staying in the Republic. Mm. You are, if, if you are coming from Afghanistan, for example, and going to the USA, and you ask South Africa, can these people transit South Africa to mm. go to the USA? The special conditions that are linked to the transit visa. And the government can say, fine, we'll grant you a transit visa, but we are not leaving the airport or the border vicinity, mm. you understand? So you are not getting into the country. You are in the Republic of South Africa, but you'll end in the border. You're on the transit area of a, a, a port of entry. An airport is a port of entry. A border, land border is a port mm. of entry. So we can put conditions to it. But this application was talking about people being accepted into the Republic as asylum seekers. So why apply for a mm. transit visa? Or are they saying to us, while they are sitting there awaiting their asylum papers, they are on transit from being thrown out and for or being accepted. Then mm. you are not on transit, you are imposing it on us. Be because my understanding was in order to be an asylum seeker, you first need the transit visa because you are literally in a holding area. Yeah, in a holding until area. Until the outcome. That, that is correct, yes. but you, why impose it mm. in a nation? You are in a holding area. Where is the holding area? The holding area can be in a neighboring country. Mm. The holding area can be where you originate from. When they in Zim for over 30 days? And, and they were at some stage in Zambia as well. So you surely know. the tourists. Um, well, the Zambian authorities and the, and, the, and the Zimbabwean authorities said those people stayed there on 
a tourist visa or yes. visitors no, visa. Yes. So there were visitors, but but again, again, fresh. Let's let's forget this bunch of people and the administrative and the court. Why would a court of law? And I'm I'm actually concerned. Why is the a, a department or the Ministry of Home Affairs saying mm. they will abide by the decision of the court, they will deal with these people during the application of the asylum. You understand? Yeah, because that's my understanding, that yeah. it's at the application uh, stage that you are allowed to say no for these reasons. Well, wh wh what are the chances of them being in the country and we say no to them? Let me tell you what is going mm. to happen, and mm. that's the kind of the things we are sitting within the country. Yes. Once you are already in the country, <laughs> Whether you're on a, in a transit visa or in a holding area in a uh, dead place in Kruger's Dorp or any other place in the country, if we say no to your asylum visa as mm. a country, mm. what would happen is that we can't throw you out. We can't say we said no, now pick and go. Mm. Our constitution doesn't allow that. Our immigration doesn't allow that. Our international relation laws does not allow that. First of all, we must determine your nationality. We already know they are Afghans. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't send them to Afghanistan because they say they will be killed by the Taliban government in Afghanistan. So we must find them an alternative home until another country can say we will accept them. We can't throw them out. Why can't we say to America, listen, you guys destabilize that country. They're yours. Well, first of all, just before even destabilizing their country, they took them out of Afghanistan. The Americans took people out of Afghanistan when the Taliban government took over. Yes. Why didn't they take them to the USA? They belong to them. They but, have but, their problem. But, but that's what I'm saying, though, that we, surely take them home then. You, 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 I mean, you can't come and poo all over my home and then say to my neighbor, eh, listen, I've pooed all over the home. Can you take them in? Now, what, what, this is what I, I said at the beginning. I had wished and Dr. Mutualedi has the cabinet support, mm. meaning from the head of state, the president, and the minister of international relations and cooperation. Mm. Those are the two people, you know, Derko, the minister, and the president who should stand up and call the American ambassador in and say, we are not going to accept you dictating terms to us. Mm -hmm. Take those people, let America deal with them. Why should they be our problem? They are taking advantage of our constitution. Mm -hmm. They are taking advantage of our soft immigration laws, which are humanitarian by nature, which are very accommodative. And why would an American NGO, not even a South African NGO, mm -hmm. an American NGO stands up and say, we'll take care of these people, we'll fund them while they're in South Africa, even as an NGO that belongs to the United States of America or registered in the United States of America, and it's prepared to spend thousands or hundreds of dollars on these 22 Afghans. Why don't they go and take care of them where they are in Zimbabwe or in Zambia or even better in the United States of America because they are their babies? It's something we should be worried about. So is it you saying that they know not to start that cuck in other countries, but they think they can take advantage here? Well, if, if, if and you know, I, I, I'm not scared to, to can put my opinion on on the table. If I have to uh, really opinionate on this, I mm. just think these people are American military spies that they want to impose and use in Africa, particularly in the SACU member state or SADC member state. Mm. And as we spoke uh, before, they want to assert their presence in, in this area. These people, in my view, they were, they were military agents mm. of the U.S. And, 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 and they were spying against Russia and, and the Taliban. And when the Taliban took over and Russia also started this you know, war with Ukraine, the Americans took their agents, their spies and their puppets, and now they want to have to place them somewhere. Mm. So where is the quiet, silent place where rules and regulations can be banned? Okay, let's look on the map. We think they can go and sit in South Africa and we'll tell South Africa mm. to do that. And I think the President of the Republic should do what other African heads are doing recently to tell the Americans to leave us alone. Their own president mm. told us to leave America alone. Why yes. can't our president stand up and tell his friend uh, Mr. President Biden to say look, can you take this Afghan people of yours? It's your problem. You yes. create it, you occupied you know, Afghanistan for over 30 years, don't make it our problem. In fact, before talking about how lately a lot of African leaders are standing up and asserting themselves, some countries have a three-border policy. So if you need asylum, you, we will not take you if you've traveled more than three borders to get to us. Absolutely. Why don't we have a, a rule like that? Well, or, or, unfortunately, or like that? unfortunately, our legislation does not have that clause to say you must have passed 
or at least the, the proximity to the South African yes. border must be one or two borders. And if you look at to, if you move from Afghanistan, let's assume mm. they come from Afghanistan, yes. which I don't think they are. To come to South Africa, you have to pass almost 53 borders or countries. No, the entire continent. Arrive, the, yes. oh, despite the entire continent, yes. they crossed other countries in Europe mm. as well. Mm. You know, even if they didn't pass all African countries, 52, 53 of Africa. These 52 country borders I'm talking about, they include borders in Europe mm. that they went through to arrive in Africa or to arrive in the southern part of Africa. And suddenly, Bay Bridge, Babata Otola Limpopo. I think we should put our foot down as a nation. But I, I really looked at the news yesterday and I felt sorry for, for Minister Motuale and the officials at the Department of Home Affairs. But these are some of the learning stuff that, you know, curves that mm. if we as a nation, we are not going to stand up and protect our territory. Another, another worrying part is that our intelligence is dead silent on this. We know what has been happening in Afghanistan for over 30 years. Mm. And then we've got Afghanistan people that are sitting right at the entry of our country. And our intelligence forces are very quiet today. They don't even come and say, Minister of Home Affairs, put your foot down, prolong the court case, even if it costs the state money. The danger of them being in their country and us being stuck with them, mm. I'm telling you, it's not worth any cent we are saving by not challenging this matter in a court of law. Let's move to Namibia, sir. Uh, President, uh, is it Hage Heinhop? Yeah, Heinhop. Yeah. Uh, one may say Heinhop, but yeah. He is on a video that has gone viral. I like that. Uh, in this video, he's pretty much giving a middle finger to the German ambassador. Yeah, well, uh, uh, firstly, if we look at it in the last three weeks, yes. it has been happening. It started in, in North East Africa, North West Africa, mm. you know, the, the Mali and the neighboring countries. They, they showed the, the French, the, you know, middle finger to say, we are a former colony. We'll even go to an extent of adding other languages as mm. our official languages sure. and not only as French. As we should have done, as we should as have done. As they should have done initially. Yeah. And, and they stood up. Then before, uh, 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 the, the, the president of Namibia will come to that video. It was President uh, Kagame in Rwanda, who the media first misled that he's going to take asylum seekers and homeless people from the UK. And he came and he corrected it. And he actually told them, if we are kind and we are good for our people, don't take advantage of Rwanda. Keep those people there. So these African leaders, whether they are old ones or young ones, they are starting to show and assert themselves against the imperialists mm. and the superpowers. Then came president of Namibia. Uh, you know, I smile when I look at that video. But apparently before the German ambassador, he addressed another uh, head of state from Europe to mm. say, but why did you come here rushing? and telling us that there's too many Germans, I mean too many Chinese mm. in, in Russia. Why is it the concern of Europeans that there are too many Chinese in Namibia? That's a very bold, very principled mm. position. I mean, he even went to an extent of saying to the German ambassador, you must respect us. You must yes. respect our country. Mm. You must respect who we are friends with. Mm. We are also friends with And while with we're you. at it, when are we getting our reparations? Uh, yeah, uh, well, by the way, uh, the Germans are the worst. They should have not even started worrying about the Chinese in Namibia, mm. knowing historically that the Germans actually nearly destroyed Namibians. Absolutely. They nearly destroyed their culture, mm. and they occupied Namibia, exploited it, and they're refusing with their operations. So they should have not even thought of doing that, but hail Congratulations and thumbs up to the president of Namibia. That's what a head of state should do. So, 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 so what did he say to the ambassador? Well, he, he because, because where does that ambassador summoned him? Look, uh, that's what the media do. He yes. summoned the ambassador. Well, you, you know, it's summoned is the is the wrong word, but in diplomatic language, the head of state may summon the, the ambassador. So the ambassador requested a one on one yes. with the president. But what, what was very unusual about that meeting? Uh, that one on one is that there were there were a media you know covering it and I thought the president of Namibia knew what he was going to do mm. because he was already irritated by what had happened a week before. Yes. So the media was there for the people to know and I think the people of Namibia they must be very proud of their president to mm. tell to tell their former colonizer to say this is not your home, this is our home, this is not your house. Mm. You are a guest here. You must behave in a manner that suits us. Don't tell us because that's what Germany was trying to do. Sure. The, the the Federative Republic of Germany was trying to tell the Namibians whom they should be friends with. Mm. who should come to Namibia in which terms. And he simply said to him, that is disrespect. You don't dictate to us. Mm. You don't tell us who should our friends be. You yourself, you came here unwelcomed. 
but we are still keeping you as friends. So mm. please give us respect. And it didn't end there this week. I don't know if you saw the one for this week. We, we must be very careful when we speak of this one. President Museveni, one of the oldest hard not to crack tough African leaders that is not being liked by the West. And, and I should be very careful in mentioning this one. President Museveni also told the Americans. Why, why must you be careful in mentioning this? Look, it is an issue about uh, LGTBIs. He mm. signed into law sure. uh, a, a law that has been pending in Uganda mm. that they are not accepting same sex uh, marriages or relationships, mm. even. So they have banned the gay, lesbians, queers, and transsexual relationship. You know, I, again, I don't want to talk about that. That's not my focus mm. uh, 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 because I don't have anything. Uh, I'm mm. a support of the LGTBIs. Mm. But, but President Museveni is signing that into law, which has been a bill in that country for many years. It has mm. gone through parliament and all that. Then the Americans stood up and said, should you dare sign that into law, mm. we will cut foreign aid into uh, 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 the, Re the Republic of, of, of uh, uh, Uganda. Uganda. Mm. And, and we are talking about uh, over 430 million US dollars per annum, which is foreign aid. Mm. Now, let us leave that controversial law that has been signed out because we are talking politics here. You know, mm. there's a trick in this whole thing. We should look at how Museveni, the president of Uganda, responded to the Americans to say, oh, you want to cut foreign aid? You can keep your foreign aid. Actually, we don't need aid in Uganda. We've got mineral resources we can feed ourselves. And he went further to say, but we make laws in our country that suits us. Mm. We have Russia as a friend that is standing and knocking at our door. They've got the same laws in that country. And why wouldn't we ditch you as Americans and befriend somebody who has common interest like us? Mm. That's another principal decision. The, the next one will be when he was saying to the Americans, and by the way, foreign aid is a problem. It comes with problems. It comes with conditions. It is it, 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 dictated to us because you are giving me money. The hand that feeds you controls you. Mm. And President Museveni was simply saying, I'm sick and tired of you feeding us with above 400,000 US dollars uh, or millions per annum. Then you dictate for us. So keep your millions, keep your aid, get out of my country, I will do what I want. Mm. And for that, again, I commend him. The fourth or the fifth president in the continent who stood up against the superpowers. America's superpower and being a giant and control, it's gradually, you know, uh, collapsing. It won't mm. completely collapse because they will still pump money. Sure. We are sitting in South Africa. We are being regarded as a big brother in Africa. But we still listen to the USA and Europe in dictating a number of things to us. In, in fact, I was going to actually um, speak about that, that, you know, it's all good that as Africa, a lot of our leaders are starting to stand up to, you know, the big eight, if you will, uh, the big brothers mm. and, and sisters. But within the continent, though, when are we going to start having the balls to call one another out? When are we going to actually make the peer review mechanism, uh, when are we going to give it teeth that, yes, you are a sovereign state, but as a neighbor, I should be able to call you out and say, you know, because of how you choose to govern your people, a lot of them are running to my country. It impacts on me, yeah. It, it impacts on me. Now, my clinics are overrun. Uh, my, 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 you know, my people are fighting for resources with your people because your people have no reason to stay in your country. Look, when look, do we get to that? We, we have been, I have to be honest, we have been at that stage as a continent, mm. whether as regional bodies like sure. SADAC mm. uh, or, or the East African community or ECOWAS in West Africa, there have been those attempts. Mm. We will recall, if I use East Africa, when Rwanda was, was said to have occupied the, the eastern part of the DRC, the East African community stood and they engaged mm. President Kagame and that's years ago to say, but this is going to cause problem for the neighbors of the DRC and your neighbors. Can you engage on this? Mm. And they found a common ground, you know, to say, I will occupy the east of that country until there's stability because I'm protecting my own territory. Yes, you yes. know what We have seen it's it. A, in, it's a buffer zone. Yes, it's a buffer zone. Mm. We, have, we, have, we have seen it in Sadak, for example, during President Mugabe and President Mbeki's time. Fine, we took a silent diplomacy at that time, which we should have not done it. We 
prolonged the silent diplomacy. Mm. We should have added at that time to say to the Zimbabwean government, we do understand that there are imperialist you know, sanctions against Zimbabwe, mm. but get your house in order so that there must not be an influx of your citizens into our country. And the sure. Zimbabweans are not only in, in South Africa, they are also in Botswana. Mm. They have the same problem that sure. we are having. They are also in, in Mozambique and, and to some lesser extent in, in, in Eswatini. You know? so, so that engagement is very important. We have regional bodies that are actually active in that. But let me tell you why is it not happening. Mm -hmm. In all the three regional bodies that the continent have, only the East African community has a parliament. In other words, the agreements of countries like Rwanda, uh, uh, Uganda, Tanzania, in the East and so forth, the agreement they have under the EAC, East mm. African community, they are binding. Oh, yes. You understand? So they have a parliament, they have a sitting uh, uh, you know, president of the region, they've got a regional constitution or regional laws. So they, they, can, they, so they can be accountability. They can be accountability. Sure. All other bodies, like, uh, let's come back home, in SADAC, SADAC is operating on a protocol. Mm. Even if we agree on something and then you go and you do not do what you said you will do, sure. there's no accountability, mm. there's nothing. So if we can go to an extent of what East Africa has done, that's why if you look at them, Kenya is one of the best performing countries economically well, at the moment. Flying. Kenya, is, Kenya flying. is flying. Kenya is moving. And we always thought it's because they were puppets of the USA. Mm. The USA was pumping money into them. But even if they were doing it, the USA is pumping money to almost everybody in the continent. Sure. Sure. What they did smart was they went on and they created rules domestically. They created rules with their neighboring, and they are abiding to those rules. And I think they're starting to see the benefits of actually having laws mm. that they made themselves for themselves in order to can you know govern their citizens. And it's starting to show the fruits. But we need teeth. We need leaders in Sadak who can stand up and put it and say to their neighbors, look, Botswana tried to deal with President Mugabe. What happened? Mm. Actually, all other countries turned against Botswana at the time. They mm. didn't turn against President Mugabe. Sure. Then we have issues where President Museveni is giving problems with President Kagame. Our relationship with Rwanda, for example, mm. so, you know, were terminated during President Zuma's time. And, and I think we should start working on African relations in order to arrive at where we want to see the continent. A United Africa is, is the first solution towards African problems. We may have uh, friends, we may have neighbors, you know, or, or other countries, uh, whether it's the East or the West, but us being in good relations between each other is much more important than the relation with foreigners. Because if we can fix that, uh, governance, um, human rights, there's no reason why this continent shouldn't be flying. Well, uh, there's interference of former imperialists, of former that. colonizers. And yes. it's, it's, look, for me, that's the biggest problem. Yeah. We, you have a sitting head of state that Europe and, and the U.S. don't like. They come and they give, they create insurgents mm. in the country. Mm. They fund insurgents and they remove they that destabilize. Yep. They destabilize the mm. country. What we should do first, and this is where people like Biko and Sobiko comes in, so we must rely on ourselves. Mm. We, must, we must be able to say to America and the Europe and the Asians, and, we like you, we work with you mm. in, in bilateral or multilateral for us. However, we want to deal with our issues internally as Africans. And we lack that. And, and, and it's lack of backbone of our leaders. Yeah. I, I have to So be we, we'll call you, don't call us. Yeah, yeah. But our leaders have no backbone. They can't stand against superpowers. And, and, and people who used to say it is because of relations and investment, but if investments, mm. you know, people call them foreign direct investment. I call them foreign di 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 direct, you know, uh, uh, invasion of countries because they don't invade with hippos and helicopters and flying machines. Mm. They invade with money and budget, and they want to dictate to a country what they should do. And we should stop that. And, and who you should be friends with. Who we should be friends with. Mm. I mean, the, the, the change of government, the, you know, regime changes and sure. things like that. We are a democratic state. We go to elections. But trust me, when the people sitting in Stellenbosch, who are actually part of the bigger conglomerates in the world, in, in London and UK, decide to, and, and US decide to say, but we don't like this president. Mm. We are removing this president. We need a better one. And I think that's one of the problems we are sitting with why President Ramaphosa is not making decisions. Because the owners of this country, haven't given an instruction of who do they want to be sitting there. You know, they may have not liked Didi Mabuza, yeah. but do they like Paul Mashatile? I don't think so. And they'll be very uncomfortable. We are going into national elections next year. 
where, where some of us, I'm one of the people who say the ANC will not get 50% in the elections next year. And if they don't, mm. you know, uh, uh, I, I heard one of the political analysts saying we must not be surprised if Julius Malema wakes up and being the deputy president of the country next year. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It is highly possible. And what makes me say it's highly possible is what is happening in the metros, where in Tswani you have coke yes, already as the mayor. Trading. There's, there's horse trading. There, there, there's, there's trading. There's yes. horse trading. We, other parties can come and say, we'll give Julia to see that as long as it's not the ANC, then we'll support that. And if it can happen at uh, municipal level, what's to say it can happen at national level? A exactly. I, I, I'm, I'm saying this is a build up to provincial and national elections. There's yeah. horse trading. There's, there's meetings happening in the backyard. Wheeling and dealing. And, and to say, what if this happens next year? What should we do? And I think the smart people in the ANC, yes. they are already thinking to say, what if we do not get 50% next year? Who is Plan B. the one we can start talking to and let's start you know, building the relationships yes, at the sir. moment? I think a wise politician would do that. Botsang, we are out of time, uh, my good sir. Uh, it's been an interesting week. I'm certain next week will be more interesting uh, with a brand new cabinet and uh, even more politics. Well, look, if we don't have a cabinet by next week, we must just as well decide we don't have a country. Uh, uh, it's interesting for me. I want to see where the country is going. I want to see who will be occupying which position. Uh, I have my own speculations, uh, uh, but I, I want to see what's going to happen. Will, 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 will the SOEs go to their departments as yeah. the ANC resolution? It's my focus. Is um, NDZ coming back? I doubt is she's going to come back. Not not that she will be fired, but I think she's tired on politics. I doubt she's Is Sisulu come. coming back? Well, uh, Sisulu wants to come back, I can assure you. If Ramaphosa can keep Sisulu out of the cabinet, it's going to be very dangerous. It's a woman. Yes. Has history in the ANC. Mm -hmm. She has been performing. Sure. So the, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't come back. Trele, is he coming back? Oh, yeah. Minister Trele. <laughs> My wish, I don't wish he comes back as a minister, but I think President Ramaphosa like uh, Minister Trele. Uh, yes, but really, honestly, uh, there's been complaints about the police. I don't think Minister Trele should come back. And, and by the way, uh, and, and those, I don't, uh, there's nothing between me and you, but I like him as an operator, not as a politician. Ladies and gentlemen, analyst, commentator, author, Botsang Muilwa with hashtag Polytricks. This has been Wow, What a Week, part of the Africa Podcast Network. Reach us at waw at africapodcastnetwork.com. Yo, hey. Can you hear me? You listening? Hashtag. W-A-W. What a week. What a week. week. This is Wow. What a week.